Okay, now let's look at slum test and why do we need it? Well, first of all, what is it? Um, I'm sure you guys have seen that cone test that we fill it up on side and then remove it and then measure the amount of drop. So that's pretty much um, is the slum test. So it's an easy test that we need to do it before pumping the concrete. And the next thing is, why do we do it? Well, there's a misconception that the slum test is to check the concrete mix design to make sure it has the right strengths and other properties. Yet that's the wrong answer. So pretty much there are two main reasons we do slum tests. One is to make sure it's workable. Second, to make sure it is consistent mix, meaning that obviously the aggregates all uh, well mixed and so on. So the workability is obviously measured based on the amount of drop. So we're gonna read that obviously drop value, then compare it with some standards, some tables. If it, it, if it is within acceptable range, then we pump the concrete. If not, then we do another test. And if the same thing happens, we have to reject it. So that's how we check if it is workable or not. So workable means that we can pump it, we can place it you know, without any um, honeycombing, without any, you know, blocking the pump line. So that's very important, very crucial, especially if the slump value are low, say around 80 mil or 100 mil. Next, consistency of the mix, it will be obviously measured based on the shape of the cone after we remove it. We'll look at that in a minute. So to start, let's look at how do we do this test first and then we get into those um, other details. So obviously we take a sample first. Um, this sample, it's important that it's taken after 0.2 meter cube of concrete is discharged because the, the early discharge will be slurry. So it won't be a good indication of the mix. So we have to give it a good mix. As you can see, this guy is doing it. Then uh, we're going to fill up this uh, cone form in three layers, three layers. And every time you fill it up to third layer, we have to compact it uh, using a special rod. See, that's the one. So that rod has a standard diameter and lens, and we have to obviously do the compaction with uh, 25 impacts um, of that rod. So uh, we have to distribute that evenly across the full area of that layer. So we proceed for the next layer. So as you can see, the guy is doing it and um, then repeat the compaction process. So um, you might have realized that he actually measured the, how much the rod goes into it. So to make sure that it fully compacted to the previous layer as well. Um, and eventually he's gonna, um, you know, continue on to the last layer and uh, repeat exactly the same uh, procedure um, and um, go ahead with the uh, test. So it's a very straightforward, you can see you don't need any complicated equipment, you don't need any complicated um, you know, skills to, to perform this. That's why it's been widely adapted uh, to check the workability and consistency um, of the mix. So again, remember, it's not to check the concrete streams or amount of water. It's not for that reason. And I'll give you a reason in a minute. So um, now, uh, once that's uh, finished, so it's going to remove all that um, excess that is dropped on the plate and it's going to remove it. So this, this form shall be removed very slowly. Just because if you shake it or remove it very quickly, uh, there's a chance that you get the wrong um, slum test. So here we go. So the cone drops uh, clearly with respect to original height. We're going to measure that amount of drop and then um, obviously report the number. So if there are different, um, you know, drops values, we just average it out and then report that as the slum test um, result uh, for that uh, for that truck. So um, when he's doing the reading, um, he has the important that he actually needs to round it up to nearest five if the design slump is less than 100 mil. And he, we, we run it up to nearest 10 if the design slump is more than 100. So design slump is the value that obviously is given on the drawing for that specific um, concrete. And obviously um, we're doing this test to see um, whether or not 
the Islam test is within acceptable range with respect to that design slump value. So you can see there's a gauge um, inside the mix and um, that's actually measuring the temperature and we will look at that a bit later on and see why do we need to do that. So that's what I just uh, mentioned. Um, obviously the way we read it is important. So if you see a slump test given, I don't know, 87 mil, it, it's, it's out of question, right? So the guy doesn't know that they need to round it up to nearest five. So you have to raise the question and even maybe rock up to him and say, you know, do you know why we do this test? You know, what would happen if, you know, you don't have the acceptable um, tolerances? So ask them, you know, do they know there are acceptable tolerances? Because um, I've seen in instances that, you know, they just report a number on the paper. I don't know, 60, 70. And the concrete still gets pumped, you know, rather than obviously stopping the concrete and making sure that, you know, we take necessary actions. Okay, here is the table for acceptable tolerances, which I was mentioning, and it would depend on your design slump value. Look at the left column. So that's your specified slump or your design slump. And um, based on what value it is, you would have different tolerances. So say you've got, I don't know, 80 mil um, design slump, specified slump for your concrete. That means you can read, you know, plus or minus 15 which means you can read, I don't know, 65 to 95. But anything outside that is not acceptable. So they have to take another sample, repeat the test. And if this happens again, they must reject the mix. You, why we need to take another sample? Because it could have been operator's mistake. It could be some other issues. They didn't compact well. They didn't um, take a good sample and so on. So that's why we let them to do another test. But if this happens again, we have to reject the mix. You know what I mean? And not just, it's not about just writing a number on a piece of paper. It's about understanding that, you know, if that mix has the properties we, we're looking for. So um, very important uh, to get this message um, across. And, you know, I just want to highlight again that uh, slump test is not to check your concrete strengths. Why is that? You would come across two different mixes, one 32 MPA, another 40, 40 MPA. Yet both could have exactly the same slump. Both could be 80 millimeter, you know. So if the slump was an indication of the concrete strengths, you know, how come we get same slump for these two different, you know, mixed with two different strengths? So again, um, be mindful of that um, misconception. You may say, amazing. Um, now you know that obviously how to measure concrete workability and the things you need to know around slump um, test tolerances. But what about consistency? How do we make sure that, you know, the slump test gives us an answer about the consistency of the mix? Well, that comes back how your cone behaves after you remove the foam. Does it going to collapse or, you know, shear off? So put it this way, if any of the first two results happens here, so the cone completely collapses or shears off, you know, sideways, that means your mix is not consistent. That means that it couldn't hold that cone shape. So you should be able to hold it. You know what I mean? It just needs to sag and then drop, not completely sh and like fail and lose its integrity. If it happens, that means that the mix is not um, consistent and the aggregates are, are not mixed well. Again, they have to do another test. And if it happens again, we have to reject it. Um, because that would tell us that obviously there's something wrong with the mix and we can't um, work it out. So true slump that you get on site is the cone that kept its shape and then we, we, we read the value of the drop.